Um, before we officially get started, um, I do have a reminder from uh, Maureen Hartnett uh, in our finance department who had gotten in touch with our area leaders about uh, credit card machines and about um, squares uh, to process uh, payments, whether you're at fundraisers or um, other types of events, selling merchandise, what have you at your own events, um, so that you don't have to worry about borrowing those from the state office. Now, <coughs> you can certainly borrow those uh, from the state office and continue to do so, um, but we recognize that it can be a challenge to um, get them from us, uh, you know, working out with me to driving to drop them off and all that kind of stuff. So if it would be easier for you and your local program um, to have one, uh, please let us know. Some questions did come up uh, from a program, uh, Montgomery County actually, and we thought that it would be um, helpful for everybody to hear their questions and the responses. Um, so these are specific to the um, squares that go with uh, tablets and phones. Uh, so um, the question was asked, can they be connected uh, via other tablets besides Apple devices, um, specifically Fire tablets? Um, they do work on Android tablets. However, they are not supported on Fire tablets uh, due to them using an oper a different operating system different than the Android operating system. Um, it needs to be a device with Google Play or the Apple App Store. Um, Fire tablets use the Amazon App Store, so the app is not available that you would need on a Fire device. But um, Android devices and Apple products are compatible with the Square. Um, and then the second question was, uh, can you pair one square with multiple devices? Um, and the answer is absolutely uh, yes. There can be uh, multiple devices paired, just not at one time. Um, to activate a new device, it's an easy 30 second phone call <coughs> um, with uh, the tech support on the square. So um, that's pretty straightforward. Again, the squares are, I think, $125. A credit card machine is about 300 some. Um, so very good prices, but I will say, um, do not let price prohibit you from getting a square or a credit card machine if you, you know, or you're not sure if your local program finances can uh, handle that, let us know. We can uh, work something out there. Um, but again, you can absolutely continue to borrow those from the state office. Um, we are happy that we're getting more and more requests for them. Um, so we just wanted to provide the convenience of you having your own. So uh, with that, uh, out of the way, um, we will go ahead and move on to our uh, webinar this evening about SOMD Advance. Um, and I'm excited to uh, talk about this a little bit. We'll continue to talk about this um, at our upcoming area leaders meeting um, that we're having next month. And we'll have some follow-up meetings uh, as well. Uh, but SOMD Advance, uh, I'm excited that this is gonna be a great program for our, our local programs uh, to work with closely with the area leaders um, identify practices. So we're going to talk about that uh, tonight. So uh, tonight's agenda, I will explain what SOMD Advance is and why I'm so excited about it. Um, and I will compare it to um, our experience with Special Olympics Maryland's experience with Special Olympics North America Advance in that program. Um, we'll cover some points of emphasis for the program. We'll talk about the process um, the commitments that SOMD is making to the local program and in, in uh, return the commitments that we ask the local programs to make to the process um, and some anticipated outcomes and we'll talk about next steps. Okay. So I, I'm starting here with our um, infographic on the strategic plan and our you know, vision framework uh, highlighting uh, growth, quality, sustainability and innovation as we work to reach 20,000 athletes by 2025. Um, those of you who remember um, over the past year plus, um, we, we as a staff undertook a new strategic plan for the organization um, to help move us in the right direction. So um, rather than focusing on that 20,000 athletes by 2025, while that's still the goal, um, our shorter term plan, kind of our line of sight is uh, 10,579 athletes by 2021. And again, our, our overarching goals are still to recruit and retain more athletes, recruit and retain more volunteers, provide more frequent and higher quality competition, both locally throughout the state and regionally, um, effectively manage all operational administrative elements, 
um, raise more money and increase awareness. So um, we are uh, looking to accomplish uh, all those things as we work to engage more athletes and families in our program. Um, and just as a reminder what the priorities are in the strategic plan, um, number one, uh, build capacity designed to position the organization to recruit uh, more athletes, sustain quality growth, and provide more frequent and higher quality competition. And I think um, our development office and I think our, our whole organization is doing a really good job there. Um, pursuing smart growth through innovative focused school-based programs um, at all educational levels. So many of you have young athletes uh, programs in your counties. Um, some of you uh, have been in counties where middle school programming has started, so we're excited about that as well. Um, but like we said, 80% of our athlete growth we're projecting comes from schools. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna to move forward there. And then uh, what I've been focusing on, plan and execute two to three pilot programs designed to help create new, innovate, new innovative models uh, for delivering the Special Olympics Maryland community-based sports program um, for both training and competition. So the whole idea is as we are bringing in these athletes at the school-based level, um, all of us who focus on the community-based program, we can start building more sustainable uh, programmatic models so that we can hold these new athletes when they transition from school to community. Um, so here's some key assumptions and understandings that I have as it uh, relates to growth. Um, I'm just going to cover these pretty quickly, but this provides just a baseline of where, where are we going and what do we need, right? So in order for SOMD to reach our 20,000 athletes by 2025, growth and success must be driven at the local level. Um, and full-time SOMD staff have to work more closely with local leadership to provide better and more consistent support. As I've said, you know, over my, the past year uh, that I've been in this position, you know, almost exactly a year, I've realized that um, we as a staff need to do a much better job of uh, being present, providing consistent support, asking questions, um, answering questions and, and doing whatever we can to support you as, as leaders who are doing this as volunteers. Um, and we you know, can't say how much we appreciate all the work that you do and you know, really reinforce our commitment to all of you as leaders. Um, we've heard you, that you are absolutely at capacity with what your programs can offer. And I've seen it, I've heard it, I understand it, um, and I agree with you. Um, also knowing that if 80% of our growth will take place in school-based programs, the community-based programs need to use the next few years to increase programs and capacity in order to retain more athletes in, in transition. So, you know, obviously as more athletes stay on board, as our retention numbers increase, what we don't wanna do is have just longer waiting lists in our program. Um, we wanna make sure that athletes who are involved in the program get to compete. Um, with a statewide retention rate of just under 74% in uh, 2018, an understanding of program quality can help drive increased athlete engagement. So, um, you know, that first goal is to recruit and retain more athletes. And I think that we've, you know, placed a lot of emphasis on recruiting new athletes and not always, and when I say we, I mean our, our staff at state headquarters, um, we haven't always looked as intentionally at retention. Um, and so we're gonna have to look at the quality of program uh, to drive retention. We need to utilize the knowledge around the state more effectively uh, for information sharing. That's one of the things that I, I hear at our local program or our area leader meetings uh, that we have um, coming up on July 20th, hint, hint. Um, but it's that there we do need that forum to information share to ask questions to use the knowledge that's in the room with other area leaders to advance our own programs um, and kind of the last understanding that i have is that previous attempts for strategic planning haven't had adequate emphasis on tactics and actionable items um, nor support and attention from somd staff members so uh, certainly not to create a bleak picture but i i do understand that look we've done strategic plans before We've done them in the office, we've done them with the local program, um, and we want to make this one different because we want to make this one really actionable, and that's where SOMD Advance comes in. So, what is SOMD Advance? Uh, Special Olympics Maryland Advance is modeled after the Advanced Program of Special Olympics North America, 
um, and will be a resource for local programs to assess existing programs, plan strategically, and ultimately increase capacity and quality uh, for their programs. So the overall goal is to provide a platform for best practice sharing and technical support with a commitment to improving the quality of concentrated areas, which are critical to furthering program growth, health, and sustainability. We want to assess our programs. We want to understand what we're doing really well. We want to understand where we can improve, and we want to drive a lot of support to those areas of growth um, so that our local programs and overall program across the state can improve. Um, so, as I said, this is modeled after Special Olympics North America Advance, um, and Special Olympics Maryland was either one of the first or the first programs to go through Advance. So Special Olympics North America, um, their managing director and their staff said, we want to help make our, our U.S. programs better. Um, so in 2017, Special Olympics Maryland was a pilot program for SONA Advance. Um, we participated in a self-study, which I will be sending out so you can see how we scored ourselves. Um, and it assessed a wide variety of areas, um, from fundraising to board engagement to sports to unified champion schools, um, all different types of areas. Through that self-study, um, Jim, you know, senior staff, our staff in the office, um, we were able to identify areas of um, where we wanted to focus our efforts to get better. So we identified program, which we said were local programs and schools and fundraising specifically on board engagement. Um, so in the fall of 2017, some of you may remember um, when we did this, um, we assembled a Special Olympics North America advanced team where we had a Special Olympics staff member from Colorado, from New Jersey, from Illinois. Um, we had a staff member from Special Olympics Ireland, um, Special Olympics Southern California, and the staff of Special Olympics North America. They came, we did a three-day um, work session where we learned what other states were doing. Um, we had very honest conversations about what wasn't working well and what was working well um, with our program. And we used that to um, develop our strategic plan. It really drove our strategic plan, the board retreat, and identifying the areas of, of um, strategic growth that we had. Um, it's through SONA Advance that we um, came up with our emphasis on board engagement smart growth through schools um, and it, you know ultimately the restructure to provide more support to the local programs through a region model um, our colleagues in in ireland and colorado were strong advocates for that and i think as we've been uh, working through this year i think um, that was absolutely a good decision so uh, just um, earlier this week i think it was tuesday we had our um, final uh, Special Olympics uh, North America Advance uh, Progress Report, um, where we kind of got our final report card and and did kind of a science fair of this is this is what we did, this is how we improved, and um, this is how you all helped us. So uh, things went well, and I'm I'm really happy with um, with where we are and how we've done. So let's take a look at what Special Olympics uh, Maryland Advance will look at. Um, we have a few points of emphasis here, okay? We want to look at infrastructure, um, management team, uh, marketing communications, and the volunteer support. We want to look at the sports programs, obviously, we're a sports organization. So taking a look at the quantity and quality of our sports, um, our unified versus traditional offerings, our coach and volunteer sp support specifically for sports, um, and the training sites that we have. Want to look, take a look at our non-sport programs, things like our school partnerships where applicable, um, young athletes programs and assess those um, for programs who offer at the motor activities training program, athlete leadership certainly, um, and our health and fitness program as that continues to become part of the state. Um, and then lastly, uh, fi fundraising and financial stability. So what fundraising is going on in the area, what are the signature events that are happening, like inspiration walks, golf tournaments, and those types of things, um, collaborative fundraising efforts um, where people are, you can see there's Shelly, Shelly and her cast after gone over the edge, um, but just as a reminder, she did not get that cast going over the edge. Um, so collaborative fundraising efforts, so whether you're 
go into the plunge, doing the um, over the edge, um, boats in the rockfish open and those types of things. Um, sponsorship and organizational partnerships, whether that's with Knights of Columbus, um, uh, the American Legion, corporate sponsorships and, and those types of things. Um, and ultimately sustainability, um, in addition to fundraising for um, annual operating expenses, are there also the availability of operating reserves so that we can try new programs. So those are gonna be the points of emphasis that we in Special Olympics Maryland Advance will be taking a look at and assessing in our local programs across the state. Um, so taking a look at the process that we'll go through, this is um, a, a really collaborative process and um, it will start with a self-assessment that will be done uh, via SurveyMonkey. So um, the self-assessment will help identify a baseline of data, uh, program perceptions, and best practices across the state, right? So um, everybody will do the self-assessment at once. And that's going to be important so that we can get a really good baseline of data for all of our programs. We haven't done anything like this, so the more information that we have at the beginning, the better. Um, then, as we identify the programs that we're going to start with, we will do a leadership review of, of the assessment. So, um, myself um, and uh, uh, we have kind of a, a consultant, her name is Elizabeth Sanborn, and, and she's um, agreed to help us uh, take this on professionally. She has a lot of experience in um, assessment operations, logistics, um, and those types of things. So uh, we're really excited to work with her. She brings a wealth of knowledge. I think um, those programs who do get to work with her are really going to appreciate her attention to detail, um, her uh, expertise in the area. I mean, just putting the survey together, I've learned a lot. So uh, she'll also be taking part in the leadership review. So we'll get together with area leadership um, to review the assessment and identify the key needs, areas of emphasis, and stakeholders for focus groups. Once we get to the, the point of, all right, looking in our county, here's the, the areas that we're going to focus on to improve. And we think if we drive activity here, we can really advance our program forward. We're going to have some stakeholder focus groups. So this is to solicit feedback from athletes, families, volunteers, donors, and other stakeholders uh, to more effectively identify the areas of strength and growth for the program. Uh, this will also serve as a platform to engage individuals for the work group. So um, I realized that in the past, I think sometimes our strategic planning is done for local programs and not with local programs. We want to hear what you want your direction to be. And we want to work with you to reach um, those goals. So this is all about getting a lot of feedback um, confirming perceptions or, you know, helping us uncover some other areas that we may look at. Um, after we do a, some very diverse focus groups, um, we'll have a review of those with area leadership and identify the work groups. So the work groups are really designed to take uh, some of the workload off of the area leadership. What I don't want people to think is, SOMD advance is going to happen and I, the area leader, will have a giant task list of things that I have to do myself. And, and we don't want to do that. We want to engage people in your community, on your management team, your coaches, your athletes, your family members in the work that you identify, whether that's fundraising, whether that's sports leagues, um, what have you, whatever your focus areas are, we want to establish work groups that can make actionable plans and start making progress towards these goals. Um, so these will be ongoing meetings with these work groups to establish the action plans, delegate tasks, and move this forward. While this is going on, um, there will be really good support from me, from Elizabeth, from other Special Olympics Maryland staff members and resources and other offices so that you are always well connected and we are working with you in this. We're not just going to say, all right, here's, here's what needs to be done, now go do it. Um, we're going to be checking in with you, we're going to be working alongside of you, um, and it's going to be a very collaborative process. So um, it's kind of top to bottom what we're going to be looking at. So here's what we're going to commit to from Special Olympics Maryland. Um, we're going to manage the process. Um, we're going to, you know, 
make sure that, that it's flowing well um, from point A to point B. Um, in 2019, uh, we're going to look at two to three pilot programs to test this on. Um, we're going to work closely with program leaders to determine objective and action items for the strategic plan. We're going to identify individuals and staff members who have expertise to support action items. Um, so, for example, you might be focused on, you know, we really would like to have a signature event in our area and we think that that will help, you know, bring in more money, raise more awareness, and that's going to make a big difference. So, we want to use the expertise of our Special Olympics team, but also some of the other local programs who say, yeah, we do really good signature events and we would be willing to be a resource for other programs who want to take this on. Um, we're going to conduct and coordinate periodic progress reports uh, after the process. So similar to, you know, we had our, you know, six month check in, our year check in and our 18 month check in. Uh, we will continue to check in with the local programs and that will be on us to schedule. So you don't have to worry about uh, doing that. Um, and as always, we will solicit feedback from participating programs to assess and improve the project, the process. Um, so, as we said, we'll do two to three pilot programs in 2019. And ultimately, um, we want to make sure that those programs are moving forward, but we also want to hear from them to say, what did you like about the process and what can we tweak so that as we take on another three programs or another four programs, um, it continuously improves. Um, what is the local program commitment? Um, when it's distributed, uh, you will conduct the self-assessment to determine areas of greatest need, okay? Um, and we ask that you do that very honestly and we'll talk about uh, the self-assessment uh, in a minute. Um, we will ask that you assist in the marketing and promotion of focus groups uh, because when we set them up, we'll be working with your families, your volunteers, your athletes, um, and you have the best reach to them. Certainly we can use our email tools and, and you know, marketing department and all that kind of stuff, but we would just ask that, that you assist as we bring focus groups together. Um, similarly, helping us identify the locations uh, for meetings and focus groups. If you have a regular spot um, that you use, uh, we would absolutely uh, like to continue to use that. You know it's convenient for your athletes and family, so we will trust uh, your uh, best judgment there. Um, assist in identifying stakeholders for both focus groups and action items. Um, so you may know someone who's been just a really great uh, coach for you. And if we're going to focus on league play, um, there's no one better than, than you know, Coach Robiard in Frederick County to, to talk about potential basketball leagues. So we want him in the room when we're talking about um, our stakeholders and action groups. So your help in identifying those people is great. Um, we ask that you share any relevant materials documents and information to support the process. So um, we don't want this to just be on face value. You know, we want to take a look at marketing materials and social media. And if you have demographic information and all that kind of stuff, uh, we, we want to work with you on that. Um, we ask that as we send out, you know, the progress updates that you report back um, and that you provide open and honest feedback on the process itself. So, um, essentially, Special Olympics Maryland is committing our time and attention um, and our resources to making sure this work. And really on the program side, we just, we'd love to work with you in identifying the people and uh, making sure that this can be successful ultimately for your program and your athletes. Anticipated outcome. Um, so over the next few months and years, we'll be working with local programs um, and ultimately, we want to develop a strategic plan with each area program. Um, and I actually had to edit that slide because I think out of autopilot, I typed uh, develop a strategic plan for each area program, but we want to do it with each area program. We want to know where you see your program going, what are the programs that you'd like to add, what are the sports you see, what are the fundraisers that you see, and we want to work with you to make you successful there. We want to emphasize stakeholder voice uh, through the focus groups. And we want to make sure that your families, your volunteers, your coaches, your management team members are part of the process and that they know that their opinions matter as we go forward. Certainly, um, decisions will be 
made by the area leadership, right? So ultimately it's up to you and your uh, leadership teams to determine areas that you wanna cover, tasks and projects that you wanna take on, uh, but we want that to be well informed by stakeholders. And um, one, I think what I'm probably most excited about is establishing a platform for best practice sharing and collaboration and strengthening connections from across the state. So I think as we look to include leadership, volunteers and family members from other counties in the you know, focus groups and in the work groups of other counties, um, we're gonna be able to really identify and connect area leaders together so that we can advance our programs together, not you know, in silos across the state, but really say if, we, if, if it's a win for one county, it's a win for the entire state and we wanna get behind that. Um, so next steps, uh, next steps here. Uh, we will be finalizing and distributing uh, via email the self-assessment. So that's the first thing that everyone is gonna be doing. Even if you're not one of the two or three pilot programs, you're gonna, we're gonna ask that you do the self-assessment this year, again, for the purpose of pre, uh, collecting a good amount of data and creating that strong baseline of information. I'd ask that you solicit feedback from those who can add perspective but only turn in one assessment per program. So, you know, some of the questions are, you know, how frequently does this happen? Sometimes, often, never, um, you know, is, you know, how often do we send out the newsletter? And, and you might need to gain um, some insights from other people, family members, coaches, other management team members, and, and that's always really helpful. Um, but we just want one uh, self-assessment from each local program. Um, and one of the things, and you will see uh, when I distribute this evening, the Special Olympics Maryland SONA advance uh, self-assessment. Uh, Jim, who ultimately filled it out, was uh, I think very honest. I don't want to say harsh because that doesn't sound fair, but um, it, you know, is rate yourself on a scale of one to three, three being the best, one being you know, needs improvement, and we gave ourselves a lot of twos and ones. Um, and we found that the more twos and ones we gave ourselves, the more open to providing assistance were our, uh, you know, our guests from other programs. You know, we, we did not try and gloat or make ourselves look good for the purpose of showing off to other colleagues. Um, you know, if we were we were between two scores. We typically went with the lower one uh, just so that we could solicit a little more feedback and get a little more insight. So um, we ask that you do that and be accurate and be honest in the self-assessment. Um, so that was a really quick overview of the process. In trying to uh, connect a little more with Zoom, I've created a poll that I'm gonna send out now and the question is, are you interested in being one of the pilot programs for SOMD Advance? So are you interested in being one of those first two or three programs to work with Special Olympics Maryland staff after the self-assessment to develop a strategic plan and drive some programs forward, increase capacity um, and see positive outcomes? So uh, I'm gonna launch it again, much like the recording, I hope it works. Um, so I am launching the poll now. Uh, please go ahead and vote. And um, I am going to also, uh, at this point, open it up to questions. So if um, you have a question, feel free to raise your hand um, and I can unmute you. Or if you would rather um, wait and email me, that's fine too. And actually, Elizabeth, if it's okay with you, just so you can um, introduce yourself, uh, I'm gonna unmute your line um, and just maybe, uh, since our area leaders aren't uh, familiar with you, maybe just say hi and, and a little bit about your background and what brought you to uh, supporting Special Olympics Maryland in this way. Good 
you can mute yourself. Get up your phone app. I'm sorry, it's not letting me unmute you for some reason. So, um, let me see if I do this. Can you hear me? Oh. Can you hear me? There we go. So, Great. you are now unmuted. Sorry about that. That's um, okay. To give an introduction. Hi, everyone. Great. I'm Elizabeth Sanborn. I actually um, have a contact in Special Olympics through Jim Schmutz. Our sons played hockey together years ago and uh, talked to him a little bit about his program and what he does. And I currently am on sabbatical from work. So every six years, we get a four month sabbatical, which is the best benefit ever. And we have to structure that sabbatical to do something that we wouldn't be able to do if we were, if we were working. And I travel a lot. I work for a consulting firm and I'll tell you a little bit about that. But I've, I'm on the road a lot, so I can't commit to anything. I can't commit to a class. I can't commit to volunteer work. So both of those things are on my list and of course, um, Special Olympics came up um, in my mind as an as a organization of which I'm passionate and would like to help. So I got in touch with Jim and he said, wow, we, we're trying to do this, this strategic plan and sounds like what you do aligns with what um, uh, we are trying to do, what I do for a living. So what I do, I, I work for a company called Independent Project Analysis. I'm the chief operating officer. And we work with major uh, organizations globally, mostly in the industrial sector, to help them improve performance. So it's, there's no overlap there with Special Olympics, but we do a lot of surveying and baselining and helping structure improvement plans so that these companies can be more efficient in their use of capital when they're building assets. And so when we were talking, I said, uh, and, they, and actually the, um, uh, Jim and Jeff talked about the survey they had done with um, Special Olympics North America. I said, it's, it's really the same approach. You have to know what your folks are thinking and how things are going and, and really being able to compare across areas because there's good practices that people don't know about. So that's really what the, the effort is here to set that baseline. So I'm working with Jeff. We're developing that survey and hope to get it out um, shortly in the you know, next week or so, I guess. Yeah. And um, not sure the exact timeline there, Jeff but I look forward to talking with you and doing some focus groups after we get the results. And just to basically see where there's some opportunities either for improvement or growth or for sharing uh, across um, program areas. Awesome, great. And uh, just a very public thank you to you and, and all your work so far. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the process. I've worked, oh, yeah. like I said, so uh, looking forward to continue to working with you and, and connecting with some of the area leaders. Uh, the good news is no one has said no they are not interested in being one of the pilot programs. So that's good. Uh, hey, there we go. Progress there. Um, so I. That's a loaded question, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, so we are. Uh, I appreciate everybody taking time to vote. I know those of you who just joined by phone are not able to vote, um, but please feel free to um, you know reach out um, over email. Obviously, my email is right up there, but. Um, Happy to talk more. Those of you who said maybe uh, could we talk more, absolutely. Um, we're happy to, to talk more. So uh, that's all I have for this evening. Uh, after this webinar, I will send out the recording um, as well as the um, SONA advanced survey so everybody can see that um, and take a look and, and kind of see what, what we're getting at here. So um, appreciate everybody's time. Uh, thanks for sitting on two webinars with me this week. And if you were on one of the Summer Games feedback webinars, um, appreciate you taking time for that. Um, if I don't talk to you, have a great 4th of July holiday. I hope everybody um, gets to enjoy some downtime over the holiday. And uh, we're looking forward to, to seeing you all soon on uh, July 20th. Don't forget to register um, for both the webinar on Monday the 15th and the area leader meeting on July 20th. So uh, thanks so much and we will talk soon. Thanks, Jeff.